Road bikes have become much more capable in recent years, with the gravel bike trend inspiring a new breed of highly versatile and adaptable road bikes that can handle so much more than just roads. With a growing choice of decent wide tyres, this video features bikes that can be taken off into the woods, over moorlands, over canal towpaths, bridleways and pretty much any off-road trail. So if you want to spice up your otherwise regular road rides by exploring countryside tracks, then these are the bikes for you. These bikes are also highly versatile and most have rack and mudguard mounts, so they're ideal for commuting, touring and leisure cycling. We've picked six recently reviewed bikes that show just how many different choices are available in this growing category of go-anywhere road bikes that are not just limited to riding tarmac. Honestly, this video could have been hours long, such as the choice. So let's have a conversation about the bikes in the comments below. Now, onto the video. Merida's mountain bike inspired gravel bike, the Silex 9000, got our reviewer grinning over a variety of terrain, offering excellent off-road handling while still able to turn a wheel easily to road riding too. The Silex 9000 gets a full carbon fibre frame and fork, and it's a very good one. Up front, the fork has a tapered steerer for added resistance to steering and braking forces, plus the legs to stand up to the job too. Under heavy braking, there was no judder whatsoever. There's clearance for up to 42mm tyres in 700c guys, but you can also run 650b wheels with a maximum 2.25 inch tyre width, if that's your thing, which certainly adds to the versatility of the bike. So as you'd expect for a bike costing £3,500, this range topping 9000 model is well specced. You get a SRAM Force one by group set with a large spread of gears that will get you up virtually every hill. Out on the road and trail, the steering is responsive, but even with that short stem, the relaxed head angle means that it never becomes twitchy. Comfort is another place where the Silex 9000 scores highly. That sloped top tube leaves a lot of seat post exposed, which creates plenty of flex. Overall, the Silex is the perfect bike if you're going to spend a lot of time off the beaten tracks, thanks to that excellent handling and a fast, responsive ride. The fact that it doesn't really sacrifice its tarmac manners makes it a true all-rounder. The Oroterra is a stable carbon bike that's quick on the road with the strength and confident handling required for heading out onto gravel and other hard-packed trails with the appropriate tyres. Mudguard and rack mounts make this a versatile option that can cope with everything from commuting to adventure biking. This version of the Terra C comes with a compact chainset and 32mm wide Continental Grand Sport race tyres. And these allow you to crank out the road miles at a decent clip. You might actually be surprised. The Conti tyres are quick and grippy on the road and they're good on the stuff like hard packed towpaths. The wide-ish tyres, well, compared to those on the standard road bike, allow you to run low pressures for plenty of comfort. The wheels are actually tubeless compatible, so you could even go with lower pressures without the danger of pinch flats. But not with these tyres. They aren't tubeless, so you'd need to switch them out if you want to go down that route. Now, one of the most noticeable characteristics of the Oro Terra C is its stability. And that's apparent when you're tackling uneven roads or negotiating busy traffic. For blasts out on the sticks and for commuting to the office, it has settled, confident feel with enough agility to handle more technical situations. The fact that the Terra C can handle both town and country is one of its biggest strengths. Some bikes that try to be versatile just end up being a bit of a compromise, but the Oro is adaptable, strong and stable. Genuinely impressive across a range of different types of riding. The Pinnacle Arcos 3 is a great option if you're looking for a versatile aluminium adventure, commuter or winter bike, or indeed all three at once. It is also well specced for the price. The Arcos 3 is very much a do-it-all bike and really eats up the rough road surfaces, always maintaining comfort. Taking this over typical British gravel terrain, including towpaths, trails, rough paths, and potholed roads was no issue at all. The responsiveness is good, it's predictable and solid wherever you ride it, with the big tires helping to ensure the handling is reliable on every surface, whether making a sharp turn on the greasy road 
or loose dirt. All this means that the Arcos 3 is very much at home as a commuting machine too, with the casual geometry making it easy and comfortable to jump on every single day. The huge clearance means there's scope to swap tyres for ever your commute demands. Plus, there are eyelets and bosses for rack and mudguards. And powerful hydraulic disc brakes provide reliable performance in all conditions. The stock tyres are WTB Riddler Comp in a 37mm width, which can roll across most terrains as it is. But the Arcos can take up to 45mm on a 700c wheel, and the wheels can be changed out for 650Bs, which increase clearance to 2 inches. There's a lot that can be changed for whatever kind of riding you want to do, whether you want to go for fatter, thinner or tubeless tyres, ride on smooth roads, gravel, mud, pothole lanes. It's a reliable bike that does everything it needs to well at a decent price. Ritchie's Outback is a steel frame, carbon fork, gravel frame set that offers a stable and super smooth ride. It lacks the mudguard and rack mounts required to be a true all-rounder, but if you want something that sits at the sporty end of the market, then this is a slick offering. The Outback shares a lot of its DNA with Ritchie's Swiss Cross Disc Cyclocross bike, but the geometry has been tweaked and tyre clearances have been increased. There's space for up to 40mm tyres in this one. The frame is made in Taiwan from Ritchie Logic triple treated, triple butted steel tubing and a 68mm English threaded bottom bracket. The gravel fork is full carbon with a straight steerer tube. The seat post is a skinny 27.2mm to provide extra seated comfort. The long wheelbase means the Outback isn't the most nimble bike through super tight, super slow turns. You know, walking pace stuff. But it's happy to mix it up with the best of them over all other types of technical terrain. Head down slopes as steep as you dare, for example, and there's no judder from the carbon fork, and the rear tyre will keep biting on any ridiculously sharp off-road climbs you fancy tackling. Speaking of that, the lack of mudguard and rack eyelets might raise a few eyebrows especially among those hoping to use the Outback for a bit of everything, including commuting in typical UK conditions. But don't let that skinny appearance put you off. The Outback offers a smooth ride and plenty of stability. The Route AL is a new aluminium adventure bike from new Polish brand Rondo. It's a super comfortable multi-surface machine with agile handling that can be adjusted between fast and racy to more upright and relaxed through its cleverly designed, geometry adjusting twin tip fork. That twin tip fork is a reversible alloy dropout chip, switches between a high and low geometry setting, so you can tune the bike the way that you like to ride it. It's a neat trick that offers a genuine USP over other bikes in this video. Now onto the frame, and the large down tube removes any bottom bracket flex when stomping on the pedals and the frame transfers your energy into driving you forward on whatever surface you happen to be on. The drop chain stays provide ample clearance for very wide tyres, and it'll take a 650B tyre if you want to go down that route. The stock 43mm wide Panaracer Gravel King tyres provide a large cushion of air that delivers a smooth ride on all but the nastiest of cobbles and heavily rutted sections. The spec on the Root AL is pretty good for £1,700, you get an almost full SRAM Apex One hydraulic group set. The only deviation from the stock setup being a non-series SRAM aluminium crank set with a 42 chainring and Sunrace 1142 cassette. Overall, the Root AL is great fun to ride. It really is a very good gravel and adventure machine for storming the byways and bridleways and a fabulous commuter to boot. Now the Kona Rove was launched back in 2013, right at the beginning of the whole gravel grinding trend kicking off and spreading its reach far and wide. With cyclocross DNA, but modified for better road handling with a lower bottom bracket, space for wider tyres and additions like disc brakes and rack and mudguard mounts. The latest Rove NRB builds on the success of that original with an all new alloy frame specifically designed around 650B Road Plus wheels and tyres. The WTB Horizons fitted to the Rove are a massive 47mm wide, and whilst you have a huge amount of rubber and volume, the outer diameter stays very close to that of a traditional 28C 700C road tyre, 
theoretically meaning that the handling is rather similar. And they're excellent, generating astounding amounts of grip on the tarmac and off-road as well. We've ridden them through mud, slush, snow, ice, and whilst a slick tyre is always going to meet its limits in those kind of conditions, the large contact patch gives surprising amounts of grip in all conditions. The frame itself is a very nice piece of engineering. The welding is nicely smoothed out, and it's nice to see a robust external bottom bracket. In addition, this frame now features flat mount brakes, three bottle mounts to make this bike adventure ready. And to this end, there are rack and mudguard mounts too. Whilst it's perfectly happy on the tarmac, it's a bike that is more than capable of much more. More rough road, more gravel, more exploring. And the large tyres provided an ample cushioning for a speedy ride on all conditions. So with one of these bikes in your arsenal, there is no excuse for not ditching the tarmac and getting off road. Remember to subscribe if you haven't and hit that little bell icon because YouTube says it's really important. Like this video if you indeed do. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.